First of all, thank you very much for having me here. It's a real privilege. And I'd like to talk today about the landscape of innovation. And I'm not saying that there's something necessarily a way in which you have to go, but I do believe that there are certain elements to innovation which are helpful to us all. And what I'd really like today is I'd like to leave after my 18 and not 15 minutes um, with, the, with something that you can take home. And so today it's really about you. And what I invite you to do is I invite you to start by thinking about what is the innovation or what is perhaps what is the invention that you would like to bring to the world. And I want to differentiate between in the middle, right, at the, uh, right now at the start, the, an invention being something which is created out of nothing, it doesn't exist at all, and an innovation which actually may be sitting on a shelf, an invention, a lot don't come to market, and an innovation which brings something forward. And so I would like to um, begin right now by talking about one of my favorite, and probably who I think is probably one of the best innovators that I, that I know, and it's not Steve Jobs, it's actually God. Yeah, and if you think about it, you know, talk about great stories. I mean, think about this Adam and Eve thing. I mean, this is really an innovative guy. Not only does he invent the world in six days or she, yeah, after that, we need real innovation, create something out of that's already there. How about that? The dust of the earth takes the dust of the earth and creates man. And then on top of that, goes out and pulls a rib out and creates woman. Now that's innovation. I mean, what do most of us do with dust? Think about it. Now, admittedly, Dyson has done good things with it, yeah? <laughs> but really, and where does it start? And I think that it starts with passion. And the reason that I say that it starts with passion is that passion is where energy comes from. Warren Buffett has a good saying that is, passion leads to energy, and without energy, there's nothing. And it's also, passion is, however, what is inside you? And so I ask you to look at the question yourself, what are you passionate about? What gets you up in the morning? Yeah? And by the way, this doesn't just work in innovation, this works also in relationships. I mean, people coming together who are passionate about your vision, who support you, who want to help you get where it is that you want to go, these coming together of these people in a passionate way, that's where innovation starts. And one of the main reasons is that passion is really what I would call, it's about honesty. And it's very difficult to be, it's very difficult to be honest when you're not passionate. And when you are talking about something or doing something that really means something to you, like truly means something to you, then, then you are authentic. And when you are authentic, you're able to sell. Yeah, and, you're, and innovation needs to be sold. It needs to be taken out into the world because people will tell you it is difficult. People will tell you it will not work. Yeah? But when you are authentic, then you are able to sell. You're able to bring your passion across. And when you have done that, the next question becomes, well, am I going to do it? Am I really going to? And when I look at the landscape, I would say the next thing that you need to think about is courage. You know, what is courage, really? Courage is the willingness or the ability to overcome your fear. Now, you know, I may look fairly confident, I hope I look fairly confident standing up here, but I was pretty nervous about this speech, you know? They send you this thing, the Ted Commandments, they tell you to do the best speech you've ever done in your entire life, you know? You watch all these Nobel Prize winners stand up, and I'll tell you, it's a little bit scary, you know? So, but it's a little bit of courage, you know? Yes, I am going to get up and do this, and the other thing is, I'm going to face failure. So I like to say that I have good news and bad news about failure. And the good news about failure is that you don't have to worry about failure. And I'm sure about that. So stop spending your valuable time, of which you do not know how much you have, worrying about failure. Now, the bad news about failure is failure will find you. <laughs> failure will just walk into your life, sit down next to you, put its arm around you, and say, hi there, my name's failure, what's yours? Right? <laughs> or anybody never failed? I mean, of course we fail, and yet we have this idea, like, oh, I don't want to do this because I might fail. Well, the question is not, do you want to fail? The question is, how are you going to be when failure shows up? Yeah, and this is where courage comes. And 
If you then take the step and you say, yes, I am doing it, and yes, I am passionate about it, and yes, I am courageous, then you come to what for me is very much a center point, and that is commitment. Are you committed to what you are passionate about? You know, and because commitment is really, in a, in very shortly said, is your word. Yeah? And the reason your word is so powerful, and in my, in my opinion, most people don't take their word seriously enough, but the reason your word is so powerful is because your word is a declaration. You have the power in your life, and what you say you are going to do, once you say it, it is so. Yeah? And a good example of this, at least in my case, would be marriage. Marriage is a declaration. I mean, you, you all know how it works, right? You stand next to the person you're going to marry, man or woman, right? You've seen it in the movies, at least, yeah? And <laughs> somebody standing in front, the priest or the rabbi or the minister or the justice or someone who has the power actually says the word by the power vested in me by the state of Pennsylvania, I now declare you man and wife. Yeah, and in that split second, before the declaration, you are not married. And in the split second afterwards, before you can even kiss the bride or the groom, you are married. Who's married? Well, all of you can agree with me. That is a declaration that really changes your life, yeah? Okay, and the question is, are you willing to make this commitment? Are you willing to give your word? Yeah, and is it unconditional? Yeah? In other words, they don't say, oh, I would like you to, you know, do you want to marry this person as long as it's good and you're having a great time? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's a great thing. Yeah, let's do that. No, that's not what they ask. They say, do you take this person for better or for worse till death do you part? My God, I'm standing here in a nice white dress and I'm, and, and I'm looking terrific and they ask me about death do they part? Yeah, because it is serious to give your word. And, you know, we talk about commitment, and John Kennedy, when he was, again, talking about the, the space mission, he quoted the uh, Irish poet Frank O'Connor, who said, I threw my hat over the wall, and I had no choice but to follow. Yeah? And so he talks about coming to orchard walls, you know, and along a landscape, you come to those walls which are sometimes look too high, sometimes look doubtful, sometimes look too difficult, and the question is, what are you going to do in that moment? Are you going to take your hat and throw it over the wall, or are you going to put it back in your pocket and walk away? And once you have committed yourself, you come in the landscape to the place of strategy. And strategy is the place where vision lives. Yeah? Strategy is the place where you, as the innovator, yeah, it is your job to see what others do not see. Yeah? I mean, in a business sense, if I had walked in here 20 or 25 years ago and said to you, I've got the most incredible idea. I'm going to sell coffee. You know, oh, it's terrific, Andy. Great, coffee. Been around for a couple thousand years. But when you think about it, that's actually what somebody from Starbucks did. They're just selling coffee. So obviously, they saw something that nobody else saw. And that's the difference between vision and mission, is that when you have the vision and you communicate that vision, others say, aha, I want to go on that mission. Yeah, I am willing to go on that mission and be part of that. Yeah? And in doing that, you need your passion, you need your courage, because what you see does not necessarily yet exist. It is your commitment to make it exist. And strategy is also the place where teamwork begins. Strategy is the place where others, where you open up what you have for others to join you, to be part of that mission. Yeah? So that that strategy becomes something they believe in, something they take forward with them on their, on their day to day. And once that is in place, you come to what I would say is structure. Yeah? And structure is very much, uh, there's a lot of irony in, in structure because in a way, structure is what gives you freedom. Yeah? In other words, we all feel, and I, I love the house that was up here, you know, but in fact, we all need a place. We need, you feel at home when you are home. 
Yeah, and you feel differently when you're in that one meter house than you do when you're just walking around on the beach and you don't have a place. And people need to understand where they can operate, what is around them. And I'm talking about not just a, a, an idea for a structure, but even legal structures. In other words, what is the form that you choose is going to affect the way people react to what you're doing. If you are in a social environment and you choose a form which is a charitable foundation, and what you do with that charitable foundation is you go and bring people who want to give, this is a structure that they understand. If you try to take that structure and put it into a standard business setting, it will not work, and therefore you would be much better to create a business or a corporation for that for that. So the structure is what keeps, allows people to come forward and allows you actually to lead people. Yeah? And we come to leadership. Yeah? And leadership is something that's talked about a lot. And in my world, I have found that leading by example, although it somehow seems cliche or people say it very flippantly, Leadership, by example, is, is a fact. You see, people are watching you. People are watching what you do. And they're checking it out. They're saying, okay, if, is this person compromising on their values? Yeah? I remember when I first started one of my first companies, and I sent my salesman out, and he came back, and he said, he said did you get the order? He said, well, no, but we could get the order. And I said, well, how do you mean we could get the order? I said, well, we could get the order if the buyer who's going to give us the order were to win the trip to Florida. And I said, we don't have a trip to Florida. And he said, I know, but if we had one, we might be able to get the order. Yeah? And I said to him, I said, you know what? Go back and tell the buyer there's no trip to Florida, and we're never going to have a trip to Florida, and we don't need the order. Thank you very much. Yeah? And two years later, the buyer wasn't there. And two years later, we were in the account. But that's not what's important. What's important is that in that moment, that guy, or that salesperson, was looking at me to see what is it that I was going to do. You know, and the purpose of leadership, in a large sense, is actually to scale something. And ironically, again, scaling on a leadership way, you can only do by being able to follow. Now, so what I mean by that is that if you want to scale something, if you want it to become large, you have to offer people the opportunity to lead themselves, to stand up, to make their own mistakes, to make decisions, to go forward. Yeah? These things are essential for leadership, but they're also essential for people to feel at home and feel like something belongs to them. Yeah? And when you now start taking all of these elements and you put them together, you come to action. And action is really in the moment, what lives at the moment. You know, where, where, do you, where do you see what is going to happen? You know, are you listening? You know, are you with the people? But it's also the, it's also the ability to say, I, it's the act of throwing the hat over the wall. It's actually the doingness of it. Yeah? And in that action, is where, is where magic lies. Yeah? There are things that happen. There's a great quote. It's actually not by Goethe, but it's quoted to Goethe, where he says, you know, once you are committed to something, then a whole series of events come forward which otherwise would not have come to pass. Ideas that no man or woman could have dreamed would come his way come because you are committed, because you are in action. Yeah? And then he says, whatever you believe or dream you can do, begin it now. Action has boldness, power, and magic in it. So the action is very much where you find the answers. Yeah? And I have a uh, poem, which I'm not going to have time to quote you today, but what the poem says is, um, the answer to problems is action, not blame. And where a lot of people end up on the landscape of innovation is something went wrong, something didn't go the way I wanted it to, and what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm going to find out who... Whose fault is it? And the answer is not whose fault in it, is it? The answer is, who, what are you going to do about it? 
What are you going to make out of the moment? What is the action that you're going to take? And the reality is that it's often very difficult to understand what step three is if you haven't taken step one and you haven't taken step two. And I don't mean to say that things are serial. I just mean to say that being in action is actually what issues forth the, the whole concept of innovation. And so to end with, because I'm a little confused whether or not I have three minutes left or I have no time, but it says uh, I have none, so we'll just go with that number, yeah? Uh, even though we started at 15. Um, I want to leave you then with the question of where are you in the landscape, yeah? And I want to thank my friend Eric Lehman who helped me put this together as well. Um, to look at this and perhaps to take this, take this home and find yourself in here to find out what are those pieces, how do I put them together? Because it's not always the one after the other after the other, but I think you will find that if you embrace the ideas and the philosophy that's behind this, you will find that it's much, much easier to throw your hat over the wall. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>